So, welcome back to a new video. It's a uh, late Saturday night. We have some Kevin around the car. We've been very busy uh, for the last couple of days since we got the engine back. Um, yeah, so in the meantime, what I've been doing is fill the kit, well, some of the kit. So the rear bumper, rear quarter, the passenger door is on. Uh, tail lights, as you can see, a few lines are made. Just need to make a breather and then the filler pipe will go on when I have the Perspex window all laid in. Um, but yeah, this looks absolutely incredible. Um, it's, I must say it's unreal looking. Um, yeah, moving on to the front, the engine is in. We are in the middle of just mocking up all the intercooler pipes. Um, everything is all pipe cutted. No bins, so this looks fairly cool I must say um, so this side is a 90 mil that's the e-throttle thank you to uh, Lexi brake for making us an adapter to go from the hypertune to this we also had to make adapters to go from our inlet manifolds to the Bosch 90 mil e-throttle uh, so thank you to Dave at Lexi brake for sorting that for us but uh, yeah this looks absolutely incredible the, uh, we have the water lines done most of the oil lines are now finished. Um, regulator is plumbed. Fuel lines are done. It's on at the back as well. Um, yeah, so this side is done. This side has a join here. So we can take the turbo off, whatever. This side goes directly into the intake, the same as our cars. Uh, the wastegates are plumbed. All in Teflon A and 4 downpipe is done. I will show you the exhaust as well. Uh, so I fabricated most of it and then Cullum welded it all up um, just to try to speed up the process a bit. But uh, yeah, like when you stand back and look at this thing. My God. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll lift the car up and show you underneath. The exhaust is fairly good, so. Um, yeah, the, really happy with the progress. Um, obviously, the lads are still here. It's almost midnight. We're sorting out the door locks. As uh, we had an issue, I had too long of bolts in the door latches, so then they were getting stuck, and doors were like basically deadlocky on the car. So, uh, silly mistake by me. But um, yeah, we have a solution, which is always the good part of making a mistake is that you learn and all that kind of stuff but um yeah so it's almost time to get the engine out and notch the front chassis um the as you can see the down pipe and the exhaust starts in the pipe cut the screamer pipes are made um they all came out fairly good i need to get the mount um powder coated yet but yeah the exhaust is also fairly nice we have it v-banded here, obviously this is not going to be down this slow. we'll have to change that. And again, pie cuts here to turn down the exhaust, nice mount on, onto this bar here, and it's mounted here also. We have just one bolt at the moment, but uh, yeah, it looks fairly nice now, I must say. So uh, yeah, we've a few lines here, fuel filter uh, running up along the tunnel. And obviously, oil lines are down here. But uh, yeah, it's been a super busy couple of days since we got the engine back. And yeah, we're still nowhere near done, but we almost have all the fab work done, which is great. So that means I can just get everything out and we can work from there. So Podge is in the middle of... Uh, oh my God, this is after... Podge is in the middle of putting on the door locks, being is here for moral support and keeping the radio going. What are you doing? Looking busy. You're good at that part. So, uh, yeah, we are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're all doing something, which is good, but uh, it's almost time to call it a night. And um, yeah, that's just a bit of an update on progress. And I'll try to get a bit more B-roll and stuff, but it's hard to get the time to do all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's everything for now.
So today didn't really go as planned. Uh, as you can see from the time lapse, we tried stripping the car. We got a good bit off the car. We got all the pipes out that need to be cleaned. Um, we have the exhaust off. Yeah, everything's off out of the way really. And we had to put back on the turbo and manifold because Cullum made a nice little drain for the turbo, which is gonna go from here over to that fitting inside there. And uh, yeah, me, this morning I had to go to Cork to get a few bits and pieces. I had to get a sheet of Perspex and a spigot bearing and whatnot. And um, yeah, then when I came home, I forgot to, to drop stuff to the powder coating. So I went there, dropped off all the stuff with Mikey. And before I went there, we also had a meeting with uh, Paul O'Connor from Craftsman Furniture to have a look at the kitchen area of the trailer. So busy day, but not very productive. And I don't like that. Um, so in the meantime, uh, Cullum and Jack, they cut out the rear window and then we've just been doing the, the final bits of, uh, why won't this move? Hmm. She wants to go to bed too. So we cut out the back window and we've just been shaping what we're going painting, what has to be cut out, all that kind of stuff. So the plan is to put a border for like around the V shape border all around the edge. This is going to be all cut out in here and the petrol cap is going to mount into here to fill the car. Um, so yeah, looks quite cool. I'm just not too sure where I'm going to find the patience to, to do that. But it's all drawn out now and it looks great. Um, I'd say the piano music will be on and I'll be out with the blade to cut everything, send it all, paint it and hope and pray that it looks like what I imagine. Um, if not, it'll be the same as this window was <laughs> because the patients will be after running out. But in the meantime, I must get the engine out and do the final bits of plumbing for the turbo uh, and like uh, line up the gearbox, the clutch. Um, I have a new uh, Quartermaster release bearing that I put into Fionn's S14 in the middle of last year and it seemed to get rid of a lot of issues that we had. Um, so I have a new one of them from Group D to put into the car and um, yeah, I'm just lining all that up, get the spacing between the release bearing and the clutch and all that kind of right. But it's a very simple setup, I'll show you when I'm doing it, uh, how easy it is to change your uh, placing of the clutch. But yeah, other than that, it's been a not so productive day, but you have those days and you're just trying to plan everything and get everything done. Um, but yeah, we're going to call it a night now and it is, is it midnight? I'd say it's midnight, is it? So yeah, another long day. Um, but yeah. I would say that we are now 28 days out. 27 days. <laughs> oh yeah. So Mikey has been doing this. We are now 27 days out. So, and the so, pressure is on for sure. <laughs> we leave the, the purple washers be a slight giveaway as to what way the car will look when it's wrapped, but um, yeah, ooh, the details. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, yeah, we're orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pur purple and orange, purple nice orange like. Class, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, no, not the best of days, not the worst of days, but uh, yeah, tomorrow night I hope to have a lot more productive day. Um. But yeah, I only have tomorrow and all day Wednesday to get everything apart, everything clean, everything back together and get the rest of the body kit on and get it rolling for Wednesday evening. Um, obviously, if I don't get it done by Wednesday evening, Mikey will be here all weekend while I'm in America. I'll be supporting my buddy Connor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> while he's not in the haven, he'll be in the shed. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's enough rambling again for now. And... We'll see you tomorrow. You had the patience, didn't you? Uh huh. You had the patience. It's not bad, like, is it?
For an amateur? For an amateur, like, yeah. It was all freehand too, like on the blade, like, which was... I tried it with the ruler and uh, I got sick of it. <laughs> so I was like, let's just do it my own way. Tuesday evening, we are busy as usual. Obviously we had to remove the engine. So we have everything out. We just need to put another cable tie holder up here to keep all the lines up that way. Um, in the meantime, we have, I'll turn this around actually. In the meantime, we have the notch done here. So it's as tidy as I could get it. Um, and obviously it just masked everything up. So I can paint it all up again. So I have a kind of like a spray putty, it's called. It's like a like a spray filler basically to um, just kind of help with the build up and make that the blind look doesn't look as uh, bad. Um, but yeah, that's all done. Uh, in the meantime, while primer is going off, I am laying on, I have the flywheel, the Helix flywheel laid on, all torqued up and I must put the full clutch assembly together. Um, so what we run is, uh, this is our clutch plate, and they're a very, very good job. Obviously the Chevy spline for Fionn's car. Um, so a twin plate, and then we also use the Helix uh, pressure plate. So it's a full clutch assembly from them. Um, yeah, so if you don't know, Helix actually do like all range of like custom clutches. So you can put, I don't know, they have a massive range of um, like different splines they can put in the center of their clutches. And if you call them or email them, you can basically get a clutch that will go from any engine to any gearbox. Uh, they will be able to assist you and help you with whatever you need, basically. Uh, we run twin plate because we used to run triple plate. Uh, but their lowest rating triple play clutch was too strong for our cars and I do like having our clutch having a little bit of give because obviously the cars are a thousand newton meters of torque um, and if you can put that torque through the gearbox and the diff instantly you're going to break stuff so my theory behind it is to have a little bit of give in the clutch and that way you won't break shafts and gearboxes and everything so I think that's why we have such a uh, reliable year when it comes to like half shafts uh everything else like so if you are ever getting a clutch just keep that in mind don't try go for the strongest clutch that you can possibly get because that is usually the cause of some breakages and stuff but um yeah in the meantime just doing all the kind of stuff you've seen a while ago with the window is cut out and i have the trim all painted and on uh fairly happy with how this came out to be honest all the lines were uh freehand uh, with the scalpel blade thing so yeah they're fairly straight looking <laughs> to be fair but um yeah that's what we're at this evening hopefully i can get the release bearing and all that stuff done in Fionn's uh, engine and gearbox and then that's ready to just drop in as a full lump and um, that's the final assembly basically another very late night it is almost one in the morning myself and Podger are still here uh, Jack and Mikey are not long gone, but um, not a bad day to be fair. Uh, we have we got a lot done, but it's only all like small, tedious work. So now the uh, the engine is laid back in. Uh, the manifold is now fully sealed. I'm waiting on the proper bungs for the fuel rail to block off here. Um, yeah, the fuel or the throttle bodies are on for good. Um, we have the water fitting for the feed for the turbo here uh, on we have the fitting for the oil feed for the turbo here and like i showed you the drain is made for the turbo so um 
yeah we got the notch done also uh so as you can see we now have a bit of room here to just slip the fitting up and uh get it on which is ideal but um yeah we got all the pipes for the rest of the oil system all flushed out and cleaned and all that kind of stuff because uh obviously it's very important for all that kind of stuff to be as clean as possible uh well not as possible it just has to be spotless or else the engine will pick up dirt and then that's that which is a disaster but um yeah we're we're busy with all that kind of stuff engine is back in i also put a a well done fitting here i'm going to put an a6 like a blank fitting here uh, as a, like a bleed point of the head as 2j's tend to lock a bit of air at the very back there some people use that as like the turbo feed and stuff um but yeah i'll just do it as a, as a bleed point as it will be the same as my car and connor's car also um other than that we got the the clutches on the engine we got all the spacing uh all done for the release bearing um we got the so this is the mount that goes on to here for the release bearing which is here for using this guy which is really easy to like adjust the height of the bearing so that's all done uh then this also has no bolts it slips on here like this and then this guy i got it machined it's a 19 mil uh hex head bolt back to m8 and then that screws in here if i can do it with my left hand that screws in here like this and then when that sits onto that that will sit in here nice and snug and then that will stop this from rotating by just stopping in here so uh that's all been calculated and measured so the correct spacing is now in the bearing and it's just a matter of uh fit the clean bell housing back onto the gearbox put the gearbox in i have to wait for one fitting for uh some a and three stuff i have loads of a and four stuff but nothing in a and three so i need to get an a and three fitting to go from the release bearing to the quick release fitting that's already on the car um and then that is the clutch side of things complete which is great um yeah so tomorrow is get the manifold back on for good get the turbo back on for good and yeah just waiting on the fit on the waiting on the lines to do the water lines for the turbo waiting on fittings for the turbo oil line side of things so i can put everything back on i can put the intercooler pipes on exhaust on and then they'll all be going on for good which is very cool that it's all going back together for for good um but yeah tomorrow's gonna be a long day i have until tomorrow night to get as much as i can together like the manifold turbo exhaust system the front body kit bonnet bumper i got all the powder coating stuff back so got this engine mount uh powder coated to match the rest of the car uh also got the front bar and the bumper bar powder coated so i will be fitting them also tomorrow and uh yeah then the car should be back rolling i really want to see it myself before it's wrapped as i put in a lot of work and i want to see what it looks like as a Bayer Kevlar car basically uh, so I hope to have it all done by tomorrow night and we can get like a bit of a photo shoot done and stuff but uh, yeah lots of work to do still again tomorrow but um, progress is progress it's not a lot of work done today but it's just all tedious little bits and pieces but uh, yeah time to call it night I reckon Podge <laughs> getting tired <laughs> yeah so time to Hit the hay and get back to it again tomorrow. So we have uh, almost together 
uh, GT86. Um, it's kind of surreal to look back, look, stand back and look at it. Um, it's been a lot of work to make it look like this. And um, yeah, it's been big effort by me, by all the boys and everyone involved. So yeah, I think we should all be proud of ourselves to see this like this. Um, but yeah, we still have a little bit more to do until we are uh, ready to put the car in the trailer and drop it to Moose. Uh, obviously, like I said, I set myself a timeline to have it to this point by Wednesday evening. It's Wednesday night now. Uh, it's almost 10 o'clock, but I'm out here in the morning. So I'll give you a quick walk around as to what we got done this week. Um, and yeah, we will start under the bonnet because obviously the kit and everything was already kind of pre-fitted. But uh, yeah, so we got the engine back in. Um, today basically this is the that was the final assembly of it so we have engine in uh throttle body mounted the lexi brake adapter from the hypertune to the bosch uh throttle body intercoolers mounted all the clamps everything are in waste gates are on the walton manifold is all tightened up and on for good turbo systems turbo already all tightened up and everything um waste gates are plumbed uh, water lines, all the oil lines, except for that one that needs to go from the pump to the chassis hard lines, as I'm waiting on a 90 degree fitting to do that line. Um, yeah, waiting on a couple of blanks. These are only rough blanks at the moment, just to um, just to get everything kind of sealed uh, in the engine bay. But uh, yeah, there's just an oil filter to get, and then we can start filling with fluids, all that kind of stuff, but it looks fairly incredible now under the bonnet um yeah so another like the turbo lines need to be done as well but they're only like a couple of hours work and that'll be all together um but yeah obviously other than that i wanted to try get the gearbox in today uh turns out that i have the wrong input shaft after all these months of everything has to be fabricated and ready uh wrong input shaft so i have to try get onto your import in the north who are samson a steeler in ireland get the correct uh, input shaft, and then it all can go back together, uh, and I can get a prop shaft and all that kind of stuff uh, made. I might lay the box in in the minute just to see uh, will one of our prop shafts do, it should do, so then we can just drop the prop shafts to get uh, serviced and make a new one for me, or for Fionn's car. Other than that, the inside is basically ready now for um, the wiring. Obviously, we still have all the cling film, and everything uh and obviously there's lots of dust everywhere but um yeah ready for the wiring and the dash and other than that the inside is kind of done uh i must say the carbon fiber stuff is absolutely lovely like to have the carbon kevlar on the outside carbon fiber on the inside same under the bonnet um yeah it's nice details uh, obviously we got all the door handles and stuff in tried to be as neat as possible these are actually off of a uh, Toyota Corolla from Dad's scrapyard. So um, yeah, it's nice to recycle and all the kind of crap, you know, because we're all into that kind of stuff. Uh, we got the back window done. This took lots of work, um, but well worked it. All the curved lines, all the black everywhere. Add a fuel filler mounted here. So I just need to get a bit of um, flexible pipe because the one that came from Radium uh, isn't uh, long enough to get there. The catch can for the Oil system came, so that's going to be mounted up here. The catch can for the water has came, that needs to go up here as well. Um, all jobs that will be done next week when the car comes back from wrapping. But this will probably be the last time that you guys get to see the car until we reveal the look. Um, obviously, this car is going to be revealed before our cars because the plan is to have it at Japfest, um, which is only two weeks away, is it? Two weeks. So, yeah, goes for wrapping on one day and then. I will have it back by Wednesday. One of our cars must go to wrapping on Wednesday then. Um, so Pat and Linny are going to be here tomorrow doing the rest of the body kit stuff and hopefully to get one car uh, together and then yeah, one car can go next week then it gets stickered as well. And uh, yeah, mine and Fionn's car, quite similar when it comes to the look of it, but um, not the same. Fionn has his own color. I obviously still have a bit of pink. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. 
fairly happy now with everything so far, to be fair. So it's uh, down to the last few things on the on the list, which is um, the lint of <laughs> here to Mandalo Park. And uh, yeah, Mikey and Podge are probably happy now as well to see it at this point because um, they've put in a lot of work as well. Being as just a tag along, like he's only came on for the last the last two or three evenings, like so, been been wiped down the car, so that's why it's not perfectly clean. But uh, <laughs> yeah, other than that, that's all that's uh, that's all that's going for this video. Tomorrow I head to LA to see Connor. I'll obviously be bringing the camera. We'll do a bit of a behind the scenes vlog. I know people have been saying that they want like you know like what we eat, what we're doing, like outside of FD. So yeah, I'm only going to be there from Thursday midday to Sunday. And uh, yeah, I'll bring along the camera. We'll try keep Connor in the loop, see how he feels, all that kind of stuff. Try to get the emotions of the weekend. But uh, yeah, that's all for this video again. And uh, thank you for watching. If this thing doesn't make you subscribe, you can just piss off off the channel. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, leave us a comment what you think. Like, subscribe, share. Tell your nan, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>